Hi, this is just a quick video today. This is an LED clock. Sounds boring, yeah, but this is a bit special. Some of you might recognise this from one of my previous videos. I made a red version. I sold quite a few on eBay, so I decided to make a green version. Yes, there was actual demand for it. A couple of people asked me, yeah, they'd buy it if it were green, but not if it were red, so I made one. So, for those that haven't seen this before, this is basically an NTP clock. It's something I made myself, using an ESP8266 module and an LED display driver, and of course, eight, seven segment displays. PCB I designed myself, and I'll just power it off on my gun again to show you what it does. There's no real time clock on this. It gets a time from the internet, from the NTP servers. Now as it boots up, as you can see, it will display the first two octets of the IP address. Oh, sorry, the last two. So in this case it's 192.168.1.16. Now in order to connect it to the Wi-Fi network, there is a Wi-Fi configuration page. When it's first powered up, or if there's no Wi-Fi network present, it will broadcast an access point which you can connect to with a mobile device, which is a phone, laptop, or even a computer. That will bring up the go to the IP address displayed, and you get a configuration page. I think the default IP address, I think it's 192.168.4.1 or something like that, but I will actually post some instructions down below and a link to the original video. This is, like I say, this is just a short video just to show you what you can do. If you are interested in looking at building one of these, I'll put the link down below to the original video where you can find full instructions on how it works, how to connect it to the internet, and there's even a link to a blog post where you can download uh, all the instructions. Uh, there's two pins on here. That's for external 5 volt power. And there's some digital no long inputs here. In this version of the firmware, a button between pins 1 and 2, which is digital input and ground, that will toggle daylight saving mode on and off. There's also an alternate version of firmware for this as well, where it can display your YouTube subscriber counts and views as well. That button will cycle through the modes and press it and hold, and it will turn DST mode on and off. So, yeah. So a quick look. Let's uh, I've sold about six or seven of these on eBay, but a couple of users said they wanted a green one, so I made one, listed it, but this hasn't sold yet. Uh, I can actually put a link to the eBay listing if you do want to buy this particular clock. So again, that will be on the blog post. This like link to the eBay listing may change if I decide to remove it and then resell it to somewhere else and then go back to eBay. I mean, this thing was actually made three, four months ago and it's been on eBay since. But yeah, I don't know. Two buttons here, which normally, when it's in the case, there's been inaccessible, but one just reboots it. But just for a brief self-test. The other one is to, to flash mode. In this case, as you can see, it hasn't picked up the NTP signal. It will do that every hour automatically to remain constant. So if you left it in this state now, when it gets to one o'clock, it will attempt to sync again with the NTP servers. Uh, but I'll try and reboot it and it'll make another attempt. There we go. So it's basically a clock that you never need to set. As long as it's got an active internet connection, it will always be right. Give or take a few microseconds. Much less expense than using a real-time clock. If you've got any questions, you can comment down below or comment on my blog. Again, link down below. Thanks for watching.